As you know, I'm a massive fan of McFarlane's Batman 66 line, but that doesn't mean I can't be critical. Stay tuned for more of my thoughts. Welcome back. Now, as I just said, it's no secret that I do really enjoy McFarlane's Batman 66 line. And for the most part, I am extremely happy with everything I have. However, it got me thinking that there's some really weird decisions going on with this line. Now, take, for example, the use of foot pegs. Now, up until a few waves ago, every figure came with peg holes. Now these are figures that do need figure stands and as I do this presentation to camera right now I'm actually having the figures propped up against some perspex stands simply because without any assistance these figures will fall over. Now until a few waves back every figure came with a peg hole which was exactly what is needed. However, when they introduced the wave that contained Catwoman and the Penguin the foot pegs mysteriously disappeared. Now, in the case of Catwoman, I can almost understand that because it is such a small footprint and for there to have been a peg hole that may have ended up going through the top of the foot. So for Catwoman, we can kind of excuse that. However, Penguin, who is a rather portly fellow, absolutely needs to have a figure stand. However, there's no peg hole. So I thought maybe this was like a one-off anomaly. And that proved to be the case because in the next wave we had Mr. Freeze who came with a peg hole. So I thought, okay, we're back on track with peg holes. But then comes Egghead, no peg hole. Um, it really does make no sense. And this is somewhat problematic because as I said, these figures do not stand up on their own accord at all well. They definitely need some assistance. So why they've gone from giving us figures all with peg holes, a couple without peg holes, back to doing peg holes, and once again, no peg holes. Completely bizarre. Don't know why they've done this. And uh, I don't know if it's just an oversight at McFarlane or if there's a reason behind this. If anyone knows, please do comment because I'm completely baffled by this. Now the next anomaly pertains to the Riddler. So when Riddler was first introduced, I believe it was the second wave, he came as standard wearing his mask. And they did a chase variant, which was the maskless version. And uh, I actually had to pay quite a bit for that on the secondary market, but I was glad to have both versions. Now recently, they've done the black and white Riddler, which is a far superior figure in a number of ways to the previous two. Let me explain. And this is where things get really weird for me. The black and white variant came with the mask around his neck. Now, unfortunately, it's a hard plastic and it cannot be moved into position over his eyes. Had that been the case, had it been a softer material that could have been positioned over the eyes, would have been perfect but it got me thinking, why didn't they just do that in the first instance and done away with the need for this chase variant? Anyway, moving on from that, though, here's where I'm really confused by what's going on. All these figures have come with those text bubbles, you know, the biff, bang, pow, pop, which I don't particularly like. I have mine stashed away in a bag. I don't use them. However, recently... I managed to get hold of the pink cowled Batman figure. I got that from Australia. It's not been released here yet in America, but I got hold of it. And there are no text bubbles with that figure. It comes with two accessories, a bat radio and a batarang. I think it's a far better option than these text bubbles. However, black and white Joker here still comes with the text bubbles, but he also has a cane. And of course, being the black and white variant, the cane is of course in grayscale. But it got me thinking, why the hell didn't they give us these accessories in the first place? Um, going forward, it looks as if they've done away with the text bubbles because the wave that my pink killed Batman is from also includes the Two-Face that comes with a coin and King Tut with a couple of his staffs, canes, whatever you call them. 
Um, so why they sort of did a half and half with Riddler, you know, text bubbles and the cane, bearing in mind in this same wave, they gave us the black and white Robin who only came with the text bubbles. So it's such inconsistency being shown here. And it is rather frustrating because the cane does look good. I mean, it's a very soft, pliable plastic, but nevertheless on display does look good. Uh, my only hope would be that maybe down the line McFarlane might do an accessory pack so we can, you know, armor figures with various accessories and whatnot. Who knows? But again, such inconsistency. So just to recap again, we have figures that come with peg holes, figures that don't. Some figures absolutely need a peg hole and of course Prime Case being the portly penguin who topples over with ease, does not have any foot pegs. Um, very strange, and again, some with accessories, some with text bubbles. We have what potentially could have been a wonderful accessory in the form of a movable mask on the black and white Riddler that would have gone perfectly with the proper coloured Riddlers, but who knows? So anyway, just my thoughts there on the inconsistency. So please let me know in the comments, what do you think of this? Are you perplexed by what's going on here with all this sort of differences and some having foot pegs or peg holes, some not having them, accessories with some, not with others? None of it makes sense to me, but let me know your thoughts in the comments and please leave a like, please share this video, make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for more videos from all things 80s.